This is Ed Petke with the Americans in Wartime Experience. Today's date is November 10th, 2022, and I'm conducting an interview with Mr. Andrew Valero in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Sir, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you were born and where you grew well, up? Well, I was born in uh, New York City, the first boy after six girls. So, you know, Prince Andy was arrived. He had arrived. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, and... Uh, my education was uh, normal like everybody else, except high school. Okay. I failed the last semester of high school. Uh. And my mother didn't know anything about it. My sisters did, but mm -hmm. not my mother. Both parents worked at that time, Sure. five years after the Depression, so right. forth. And I failed the last, uh, so there was no you know, mm -hmm. June and so forth. The pomp and circumstance of the whole smear. How did that go over? What happened was I was drafted, I had to go mm -hmm. into the service, and my mother heard that high school uh, uh, seniors could not be, uh, you know, uh, uh, drafted okay. or into the service before unless they terminated their high school. So mm -hmm. she heard that from one of the her friends or something. Oh, your son shouldn't be in the service. I was already down at Camp Stewart, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> and she went to the draft board and raised holy hell. Yeah. And they said, but Mrs. Valero, you know, this is, he, your son failed, and he showed her the proof. She didn't know, but my sister knew, but uh -huh. she did And I was already in the service, but I failed my list. But they had the, uh, the service, uh, this, uh, the, um, after the term is over, what do you call it, the ceremony, uh -huh. and the pump the, the marching. The graduation. And, the, and she went with my girlfriend at the time, okay. and she received my diploma. Okay, well, well, everything nice. was hunky dory. No calm, no foul. <laughs> but in those days, this was like college, you know. Yeah, sure. You had a yeah, yeah, no, sure. Oh, absolutely. But I was a bad student. Uh, not that I was dumb. I would just, I didn't care for sure, it. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, not everyone's a student, right? Yeah. And what war did you participate in? World War Two. World War Two. <clears throat> Do you have any other military veterans in your family? My father was in the First World War. Okay. Uh, born in Puerto Rico at the time, and he served in Puerto Rico. Now his three brothers went into the, uh, they, they volunteered by the way, mm -hmm. and they were subjects of the United States, and they were able to volunteer for the war. Okay. Uh, and their three brothers went into the, his three brothers went into the Navy. And he, it's, he was the youngest of the, of the four. So he said, you say here, you're safe and so forth. And they saw the world when they came back with their stories. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine how he, he must have felt. Sure, but he, sure. he got to be a sergeant. And when I came home in 46, and saw, he saw my stripe, of course. Uh, right. He was elated. He oh, was, of course. Oh, look at that. So you were mm -hmm. in the Army? Army, yes. Okay. I was uh, uh, with uh, AAA when I went in. Uh, down in uh, Camp Stewart, Georgia. Okay. It's Fort Stewart today, right. Armour. At that time, it was AAA and the aircraft and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, we fell out one morning, and they said that we were going overseas. Finally, after a year and a half of training, and, mm -hmm. and the mud, that red mud in Georgia, right. my God. So and let me it, back you up there for one second. Yeah. Before, before you go, t tell me about what your basic training was like. Well, the basic training was mostly anti-aircraft. Okay. And, of course, infantry training, okay. crawling underneath the live fire and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and jumping over calisthenics and so forth, yes. Okay. Uh, the usual basic training that all, I imagine, all soldiers got mm -hmm. at the time, but specifically anti-aircraft. Okay. You know, you had the two bucket seats, one was horizontal, the other vertical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and that was, was, that, was that single barrel? Was that quad barrel? And that was a single 40 millimeter. Okay. But they also had 90, but we were with 40. The 561st Battalion, it was called. So we fell out that morning, and they told us we were going overseas. Just that. Well, it was a big hoopla. You think sure. the uh, uh, West Point uh, graduated. And we were going finally. Of course, you got in a, you're in a safe area with anti-aircraft sure. around munition factory or, or uh, God in Eisenhower, something like that. <laughs> but it's in the next breath they said, most of you are going into the infantry because of D-Day, the, the, uh, the heads rose. And, and going through France into uh, Belgium, which we didn't know about, of course, right. but the uh, casualties. 
Most of you are going into the infantry. I said, well, not me. I'm little nobody. You know, I'm yeah. frail, a little guy. You know, big, big Germans like you. No. Infantry. infantry. <laughs> so you trained anti-aircraft and then went over infantry. As infantry replacement, yes. Okay. Yeah. And what, yeah. and what year was that? That was in 1944. I arrived at my unit way up close to Belgium, the border of Belgium, um, a, 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 a couple of weeks before um, the bulge. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when you you get over there, so you like you said, you 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 don't you're not you guys probably didn't hear many stories about exactly what was going on over there. Probably bits and pieces. You, yes, you knew there was a war. Obviously, you knew that there was battles and fighting. But yes. how specific was the information getting back to you guys? Uh, uh, to to uh, newly arrivals. Well, to you guys when you were still stateside. Oh, not too much. Not too much. No, whatever the populists was hearing. That's okay, what we so were if hearing. you could read it in the news, mm, that's what you guys were saying. Uh, in fact, at that time at Camp Seward, there was a lot of uh, things scratched out. Okay. And they were called uh, 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 emails or mm. something like that. Not email, no. Female? Uh, uh, V-mail, the V-mail. Yep. And they were black with mm. white writing. Okay. And I still have some of those oh, letters wow. at home. Wow. Yeah. Uh, correspondence with other guys from the neighborhood okay. in other outfits that we got. Yeah. And I still have a couple of them, though. So, yeah. My God, that goes back. <laughs> and and uh, even that was censored, you know? Oh, sure, sure. A lot of redacted stuff like well, it is uh, Yeah, what you listen to, what them out to. Right. And, uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, so, you went over, you were drafted in 43. So you in 42. 42, in I'm sorry. Yeah. So, you would have still been in high school when Pearl Harbor I, happened. Uh, Do you remember it, where, how no, you heard about it? No, I was out. 41. Yeah, that's uh, December 7, 41. Yeah. I, was already, I was still in high school. Yes, yeah. I was. Do you, yes. you remember where you were when you heard about Pearl Harbor and what no, your thoughts were? No, I don't remember. I probably was on hooky anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have thought that maybe you you you? Oh you, yes, you I knew, was. Hey, I'm I'm going in. I was 16, going on 17. This December 7, I was 17. 17 years old. Yes, okay. 17. Because mm. the following year in 42, I signed up for the draft. Yes. Okay. How long did it take you to get drafted before, after you signed up? Uh, I went in uh, six months later. Six months. Okay. Yes. Mm. April of uh, 43. Okay, so now take me to where you, you're, you've, you've done your basic training, you've shipped out, you've, you've landed, you said, in Belgium? No, we is, landed in, uh, in uh, South, well, we landed in uh, Glasgow, on the Queen Mary. Okay. That was a big, how was that, big deal. How was that trip like across the ocean? Uh, smooth, okay. the smoothest thing, and fast. Uh -huh. I think it was less than four days. Okay, wow. From New York to Glasgow, all by yourself. Mm. I no didn't, we didn't know that. No. Oh. They couldn't keep up yeah. with it. Okay. And zigzagging, sure. in certain sure. areas zigzagging. Mm. We could feel the slight, but that was a huge... Uh, when we saw it uh, at, on the west side, and uh, the first thing that came to him, I got to call home, I got to call home. You can't do that. <laughs> <you know? laughs> right, right. <laughs> and, uh, of course, uh, they watch you like... It, it was dark, no lights or anything. Right. But this huge, huge hole. Uh, the uh, the stone, not the stone, the uh, front of the, the ship, bow, yeah. the bow. It was enormous, like 10, mm. 15 stories out. Wow. That's how huge. We didn't know who it mm. was, of course. Sure. And uh, it took a while to get on this. It was dawn already when every was in. They say it was 25,000 each wow. trip. And, of course, it'd come back with wounded and so right. forth. Packed but uh, that ship did a marvelous job during the war. It got us over there. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Now, where did you leave out of? Did you leave out of Brooklyn? We left out of New York. Out of, out of Brooklyn? Uh, 50 York? something Street. Yeah, okay. I was just stone's throw away from uh, from my tenement. <laughs> Spanish Harlem. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So back home to go over there. It was so close. And yeah. uh, that's all I thought about my parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was your rank at the time when you went over? You just. Private. Uh, private? Okay. Yeah. Uh, replacement. Private. Yeah. Replacement. Okay. Um, all right. So once you get over in, into um, into Glasgow, wh where do you go from there? What do you do once you get there? Uh, once we got there, on trucks. Okay. And uh, across France, uh, of course, France was uh, liberated yeah. by the, uh, that time, and uh, it was a long trip. Long trip. Yeah. 
And did you, uh, was, it, was, it, was it a straight shot or did you stop and do certain we things? Did. We did. We did. We stopped for uh, like donuts and stuff for the okay. populace. And also uh, one time there was a, a raid of some sort. Okay. Uh, but it was a, it was a dull. It, it didn't happen. Okay. But we jumped out of the truck and I fell into Muck and Maya. Uh, uh, that was my... my <laughs> thought, thought it was coming? Uh, uh, well, I hit the uh, the strap across. Uh-huh. Yeah, they, they had lowered the thing, but the strap hit my pack in the back. Oh, okay. And you carry a pair of socks, another pair of shoes, mm. maybe a tie. <laughs> yeah. Every, we were uh, transport for yeah. the front lines. Okay. Part of it, of okay. course. So you the, weren't uh, only carrying your own stuff. But uh, uh, enough for another soldier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No ammo, no rifle, nothing like that. Oh, wow. So you no. weren't even armed. No, we across. weren't. No, okay. we were in uh, friendly territory. Okay. Yeah. I didn't get um, armed uh, and stuff until I got to my outfit okay. uh, and assigned to a company and so forth and mm -hmm. so on. Yeah. Okay. So how long did it take you to get across France? Uh, very long. It was about two days. Okay. It was a long trip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stop and go, too. Right. Relieve yourself, eat something, yeah. but uh, slept on the truck on the way. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, so you go across France. Where, where do you go to from there? From there, we entered Belgium, okay. unknown to us, of course. Sure. We didn't know it, and rode for a long way to the tip, upper part of uh, Belgium. Okay. And we were so close to the to the uh, British Army mm -hmm. that I didn't know, and and when I was there. If I can talk about it now, sure. you know, because this is after a couple of days after I got there, mm -hmm. I took a walk. It was quiet, very quiet. The, and the war was over, big deal. The war was done, you know, and we were waiting for, waiting for Christmas dinner, the turkey, the so whole Everyone's saying the war's over. That's right, especially the uh, veterans you okay. know, right, of combat. Uh -huh. And I see these soldiers with our jeeps, our trucks, and the lettering on the side, no star like we have. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, they must be special troops. They had beards mm. and long mustaches and a lot of turbans. You know. oh. And finally I heard English, but they were, also, uh, I didn't know, Australians and Ze uh, New Zealand. Oh, okay. So I go back to the barracks. I said, wow, I didn't know we had special troops. What are you talking about? I'm talking to guys I've been since Africa to England and D-Day and so right. forth. I said, oh, yeah, these guys, boy, you never know that they're our guys because they, and I described, I, and they said, no, they're Brits. <laughs> That's the first time I heard that Brits. Brits. And it hit me right away, Britain. Mm. I said, oh, oh, they're not, no, that's Montgomery's army. And that, that was that pincer. Uh huh. Yep. That they did during the uh, the, uh, the march uh, through, through France. Of course, oh. I was still stateside. Right, right. Yeah. So you caught the tail end of that, or, or the no, back end of no, it? No, no, no. The back uh, end of it after it had already happened. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. It was quiet. The yeah. whole front was quiet until the Belgians, the Germans surprised us. Uh -huh. The thing is that the, the, uh, the ceiling, the, the, the clouds and yeah. so forth, it was uh, 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 December. Yeah. So the pipers couldn't go up with an officer uh, who's a um, terrain, uh -huh. that's his business, yeah. and listening and so forth. And there were no pipers uh, because of the terrain was uh, the, uh, so there was the, no the weather. Was, the weather. Exactly. Although the guys, uh, I heard stories later, that the guys could hit tanks. Oh, okay. But they figured, well, then you know, be, they have to be prepared because we're gonna, we're going as soon as we get replenishment because they lost a lot of guys, material wear and tear, right. or, or, uh, and it was massive. Mm -hmm. So they were waiting for the right time after Christmas, possibly February, January, February, and then the big push in conjunction with the Russians. Okay. The British, the Free French, and the American forces. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm listening to. Right. Because so I'm, I'm a novice. I, mean, right. I don't know. <laughs> but I, rem I remember those conversations uh -huh. by the guys. Yeah. And those are the guys that had been there for the a while. The non-coms so. especially. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Were they were they pretty pretty free and willing with, with the information or stories? That oh, they yeah. Had? It's among ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Among the uh, the crap games and, uh, and 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 playing for beans or cigarettes, <laughs> yeah. Plenty of that. But I was all ears. Oh yeah, no. I, remember, I hadn't been in combat yet. <laughs> right, right. So, how long did you stay in in Belgium? Oh, not too long because uh, once it, well, yes, uh, it was 
I, if I remember correctly, according to what I saw around the computer, after I got my computer in the 1972 yeah. or 73, that's when I learned a lot about the buzz. I, I was there, I was right. there, you know. <laughs> and uh, it was uh, from December 16th, they say 16, others 18th, 17th, right. 16th to uh, 1944, December 16th, before Christmas, mm -hmm. 10 days to Christmas, to January 29th okay. was the bulge. Okay. Give or take a little bit here and there. So what when you when you get into that area and, and was was that your first taste of combat? Yes, that was it. Okay. That was. So t t tell me, leading up to getting to your first taste of combat. Yes. Uh, what, what? Where where do you go and what and what do you do? Well, from that area where we were on R and R at the okay. time. Uh, I had my assignment, I had everything ready. I was assigned to a, a, a platoon, a squad, so. mm -hmm. and uh, then we got the information. All hell broke loose, okay. and we're on a move to the front. So it had and, started before you got there. Yes. You went, you went to it. Yes, okay. yes, yes, because, I, like I say, it was so peaceful, that sure. area. Uh, and it was just beautiful. And the people were out, you know, the war's over. And of course, yeah, of course, you're hearing stories, the war's over, nothing's going on, and then all of a sudden... And all I know. thought about was my family. I said, oh, I'm, at a, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not in danger. Okay. I'll be home. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yes. <laughs> that How do you was, get up to the front? How do you get up to... to we went by there? truck okay. and Jeep and tanks and, and uh, 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 the um, half tracks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was hell. It was hell. The wind, it was bad, bad, bad. They, 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 they knew. They had the weather. Mm -hmm. They had, the, they had the, the, uh, the way through the forest, yep. the Hurricane Forest and the Adens. Mm -hmm. And they had their, their openings. We didn't, of course. Our guys didn't know. Right, right. But, um, they broke through and they hit our lines, very thin lines. The guys okay. were on vacation. North offices were in Paris. Mm. You know, uh, headquarters was Reims at the time, where okay. Eisenhower was. And even his staff, was, uh, <laughs> they mm -hmm. were doing their thing. Yeah. And they said it too, the war is over. We got them licked. Wow. A little false sense of security there. It was, it was bad, inform uh, what do they call it, information, battle information, mm -hmm. so forth, yeah. So you're in the Hurtgen Forest. Uh, no, we were uh, uh, by the Ardennes Forest. The Ardennes. Although the Hurrican Forest, there was a big battle there before yeah. I got there. Okay. September, October, November. A okay. huge battle. It was like World War One. It was just a, a okay. killing field. Okay. And uh, all the trees. Well, we went through there, uh, parts of the Hurrican Forest. I yeah. just saw a portion of it. Because right. most of us went through the Ardennes. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, several of our... Uh, Two of our regiments went through the hurricane. We then we went through the other, okay. and uh, like a pincer, mm -hmm. and uh, to the uh, uh, Siegfried line. Okay. Well, anyway, we saw dugouts. Those dugouts were what? Uh, uh, that's what you call engineering. Uh huh. Yeah. For one thing, the roofs were all logs. Okay. Yeah. From the trees, mm -hmm. the roads, there wasn't a leaf on the tree. Nothing, and. Uh, 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 bear, they were just bear because the explosions of the anti-personal mines, they mm -hmm. had to be anti-personal, exploded and the trees would shatter. Okay. Yeah, and that came down. You couldn't live in a pup tent. We had pup tents when right. we were in training in Camp Seward, and that sure. would never have happened. They were dugouts with logs on the top. Okay. And I remember when we went through part of the Hurricane Forest, we got a salvo of, of uh, artillery. Okay. And it was instantaneous. And everybody dove for one of those dugouts. Yeah. They were already, uh, already there. Done. Okay. We, there were many, many, both sides, mm -hmm. by the way. And I drove through one and I hit my head and I was knocked out. Oh, no. Well, I woke up, there was a medic, uh, you know, taking care of me. And I remember him saying, if you ever get, get to a hospital or somewhere, get an x-ray of your neck. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I turned out all right. I didn't have that radiculitis, they call it, uh, yeah. radiating out to your mm -hmm. face, I had nothing like that. I was all right. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. And I went, yeah, still on duty. Mm -hmm. But I complained about it years later. And an x-ray was taken. I had a compressed fracture no. of one of my vertebrae, 5-6, five, five, C5 and C6. A radiologist said, well, get an x-ray and see. And sure enough, I said, look at that. And I remember when I, I was knocked out. 
But I never said anything at the beer or anything like okay. that until recently, you know. Yeah. The Naga, Naga came, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he did quite a bit for me. Nice. So somebody who may not be familiar with what one of these dugouts look like, how how big are they? They're not. They're not big. They, they, <laughs> like how many men would fit into one dugout? Um, well, you can get you can get four or five guys really okay. close to each other. Yeah. So is it shallow? Is it deep? Is it's, it? It's it's enough to uh, crawl in and, and sit on the ground. Okay, yeah. so but essentially a hole in the ground. It was mostly. Mostly the top was uh, timbers. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And that was to prevent, protect you from the, falling shrapnel and, and uh, uh, branches They were anti-personnel. They were all okay. anti-personnel. Yeah. And did you guys feel somewhat safe Safe, there? That, yeah, definitely. Okay. That's why everybody drove, for, and I was at last on the totem pole, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, but I remember I was knocked out. Yeah. Well, they say I was. I don't right, remember. you would. Yeah. Um, so when... A after that salvo comes in and y you guys oh we were on the move that, oh, yeah. that, was, that was over very quickly and there was no said. resistance okay. in the forest no resistance okay we, we even hit the uh, zig free line uh -huh. and that's where we had to g uh, follow the sherman tanks okay. the tracks okay uh, yeah but they already had demined all the stuff that, there were mines right. all over but they had avenues and we used the same ones that they used sure because you knew it was safe. <laughs> but uh, following a half track uh okay. uh, uh sherman tank sherman tank yeah Sherman Tanks were your uh, were your buddies back then. Oh huh? wow, well, they took a beating though. It took a pa uh, a pack of them to to knock out uh, Panzer mm -hmm. or uh, yeah, those they were ma massive those tanks. Mm. So this is in. So is this when you in, when you go th in, into the Ardans? This is pre, post, during battle. The the actual battle. In no, there? we just walked through. Okay, no so battle. Had, the, had the battle and and like the Battle of Bulge. The, the, oh, the Germans already had been through the so, main force. Okay. They they weren't going to stay there and fight any. So this, they, was, this they was had after their, the they, main battle. Yes, they had okay. their objective. Okay. And it was the Meuse River. Uh -huh. Once they got across the Meuse, which is uh, in Belgium, then they had Antwerp. But the, what they didn't know, and I didn't know, nobody knew. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I I read about it on the computer. Yeah. That that was not. It wasn't a working port. Oh. It just had been newly recaptured by our guys after the after the the hedge rose. Mm -hmm. That they just marched right through France and Belgium, yeah, and and Harlem rather than Belgium, mm -hmm. and uh, that that was not a, work, a working port. They just so they got it. they had no. They thought it was they a working. It was, yeah. yeah, sure. And of course they thought it was laden with all that oil and sure. petrol and. Uh, well, they figured we had it. They, it must be something there. We used it as landing. Yes, sure, yes, sure. yes, yes, okay. yeah. So why, while you while you're going through the through this up up until now going through Europe are you able to keep keep in touch with home with letters or are you getting mail or no. you sending mail no just you just moving too quickly no. and for almost 2 months nothing until uh, Patton broke through he got the best stone and mm -hmm. things quieted down pockets just pockets of um of uh Stragglers, German stragglers, yeah. Okay. H yeah. Had you had any interaction with any German soldiers? The only inter interaction we had was uh, the ponchos. Okay. The white ponchos, which we could put on the ground over the ice. Okay. And then, you know. Stay we dry were, or? It, it, it dry, but not, and it's still cold. Right. But, uh, but the only thing we couldn't take our boots off is standing order. No, you, uh -huh. you take your boots off and you're uh, you're in front of a firing squad. Because, oh. sure, you're part of a group. Sure. You're running and they're fighting. <laughs> yeah, so I never took my boots. Nobody did. Nobody did. So, so had you f just found their ponchos or you took, you took them oh, off? Oh, we took them? it for prisoners. Okay, yeah, so stragglers. You had some we had with stragglers that? at the beginning. Okay. But after that, we, we had. Uh, um, uh, 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 patrols. Uh -huh. When we got there, immediately we had patrols, at night and day, okay. looking for. And there were guys were found, you know, mm -hmm. either wounded or freezing or hunger. And, uh, but uh, I don't remember too many, you know, from our guys when we went on patrol. I okay. don't remember any. But others were found, yes. And three guys were able to escape from. I don't know whether you heard of Malmedy. Mm -hmm. The massacre, yes. massacre. Well, those guys were lined up in the field, and they were all oh. uh, two trucks with machine guns, right. and just it was murder. Sure. And three got away. You know the story, mm -hmm. and they were able to be to relate what happened. Malbec. Well, we had instances like 
uh, like that where we uh, uh, we did find that the guys mm. not fully covered by the snow because it's constant snow sure. and the wind forget it sometimes you felt it was snowing but it wasn't just the wind swirling around and uh, you could see that uh, they they were shot in the head. they were naked yeah. practically naked no helmets mm -hmm. they were in uh, shirts like you and I are uh, sitting here and they were caught unaware S stripped stripped of whatever would have been useful. So had not been for those three guys escaping, no, maybe no one would have known. Yeah, the massacre at Malmedy, mm -hmm. and that was about twenty or thirty miles from us. You know, okay. we read about it in the Stars and Stripes. Okay, after uh, the boats. Right, right. Um, so while you're over there, I mean, are you constantly on the move, or are you, um, are you, no. are you kind of? No, we were sedentary. Sedentary. Yeah. So yeah. What, what, is, what, what, what would have been a, a typical day while you're sitting uh, sedentary? Mostly uh, <laughs> laying on our backs and watching the uh, the bombers and the okay. and, the, and the fighter planes come over to bomb okay. different areas of Germany. Knowing it was it was our side and, and yeah, knowing, oh, all right, give them they had boys. nothing to compete. Then. Right. So I, but by this time. We had gotten a, a, a very good stronghold, very good foothold. The air was ours. The air yeah, was yeah. ours. But I, that's a old story I can relate later when it comes yeah. to it okay. about the uh, Messerschmitt 262. Okay. Yeah. You, did, did, any, any instances where you can get any kind of recreation in? No. Or, no? No. Uh, it was strictly uh, uh, eyes open. Eyes open. And they did it towards once they could do it again. Sure. So was that the, was that the feeling of... We were prepared. Not if, but when it's going to happen again. Y yes, but we never got Christmas dinner. Uh -huh. We never got anything like that because the black troops were captured also or killed. Uh -huh. And in fact, they were on fresh airborne at the uh, at Bastogne at Black Eyes when they had rifles there. They were fighting. Sure. Yeah, they were part of that 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 uh, hold. Right. The holding Bastogne. It was a a thoroughfare from there anywhere. Uh, in, yeah, that in, was a central in Belgium. Hub of, yeah. In Belgium, yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, so after after you after Belgium after you, or after you get out of the Ardennes, how long how long would you say you were in the Ardennes? Uh, all of the boats. So yeah, uh, from uh, December sixteenth, not sixteenth, because it took us yeah. two days to get there. Okay. The fourteenth, uh, the the eighteenth okay. of December, yeah. Uh, until the end of the bulge, yeah. Okay. Oh my God, it was hats thrown in the air when Patton relieved. Uh -huh. Pat, that was it. We got them. So had, and, had you had gotten word that they were on their way, or did they just show up? Oh, they were on their way back to Germany. Right. If they could, but that snow was sure. that high. It just but did mountain. you guys know they were coming? Or oh, yeah. They, they, oh, oh, yeah. So you oh, knew they were, were, and they weren't ready to fight. No. No. They were fresh troops. Okay. Young guys. Yeah. Young guys. They were very, they had the best. Underneath that poncho, they had a jacket, and, and that jacket had a fleece, is it? Mm, uh, yeah. un underling. Mm -hmm. Wow! Well, I, I had, uh, when I went to bed at night, I had my overcoat and that jacket was. That's how big it was yeah. over my overcoat, and, uh, <laughs> and 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 on, and always in the middle of two guys. Warm. <laughs> they took care Warm of me. Man. Yeah, well, I was small. They were yeah. bigger than me, like okay. you, big guys. <laughs> I barely could carry my M1. <laughs> What'd you think of the M1? Well, that was it. That was your buddy. Mm -hmm. That was your buddy. Yeah. Good rifle. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. And the way it operated, man, that last cartridge would go and flying. And you know it was time for the next uh -huh, one. Uh -huh. yeah. I wore my bandana sideways because there's a, uh, my son is an artist and he relating stories. And when I had a couple of drinks, and he did a composite of my time in a service. I wish you could see it. And um, if you're still in Norfolk, yeah. You can come over sure. and, well, and it's in two different uh, mission barbecues. Oh, okay. He made a night because they liked it so much. Oh, you got it. So he did, uh, you know, he uh -huh. had to, yeah, the master. Yeah. So from that one, he made one for them. Well, it shows me with the banana sideways. Mm -hmm. And some said, huh, uh, uh, yeah, you look like Pancho Villa. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, my, my, my weight was so narrow uh. that the less. Thing, it would be down to my my knees, so I had to wear it that way. No one said nothing. The uh -huh. non coms or nothing. As long but as you uh, had it, and it was so easy to get a cartridge and slap it in. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, so after after Patton comes through, and it's the area is essentially clear. Where do you go from there? What do you do from there? Um, uh, just uh, stand by. 
Okay. And uh, wait for uh, uh, for uh, uh, like myself uh, and equipment and food. Mm -hmm. And it was just quiet, very nice. And uh, I don't recall when we started our offensive, okay. but uh, we went through the forest, both of them, the, Hus the Hurkins and the Ardens, uh, to the uh, Siegfried line. Mm -hmm. That's where they had those huge uh, pillars, mm -hmm. and they were mined. But this had been all been taken care of, so that when we arrived, with mm -hmm. the, the tank was there, and then you followed the tank. Okay. Yeah, so it was the smooth. Had already been through. And it was mines smooth. Out. Yeah, yeah. Possibly at the beginning, they might have you know yeah. stumbly blocks in, but those. Uh, 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 Combat engineers, <laughs> they know this stuff. Oh, yeah. 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 And, uh, and so we followed the tanks, the Sherman, and uh, then the next group would come through until we assembled and on trucks, and it was just riding, riding, riding. Did you know where you were going to after no. that? No. no. Where'd you end up? Uh, well, we had skirmishes, and then we were on a huge convoy. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, that was huge. It was like... Day and night, it just kept coming, coming. Right. We were powerful, powerful. Right. Yeah. Oh, when yeah. we got started, after you know, they kicked our ass. At, I don't know. What I said they kicked us, but uh, yeah. when we were ready, it was all on, on our side. And we veered off from that big column, and we ended up in Bonn. In Bonn. B O N N. Okay. That was the capital of the American sector after the war. Okay. You had the American sector, mm -hmm. the Russian sector. The British sector, yep. and of all things, the Free French sector. The free French they sector. They went for the Free French. They wanted a taste. After, well, they, well got, they, 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 they deserved, deserved it. They got they their deserved, butts kicked by Except you know. for Vichy, you know, Vichy, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the Free French, you know, they, yes. they did a hell of a job, you know. Had you come across any of them while you were out no, there? No, no. Resistance no. or anything like that? No, in fact, they're very secret. They were oh, very yeah. secret. But they you don't knew make they were out there? Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. we knew. And yeah. they were doing things And we knew about it when we were stateside. Yeah. Too. Oh, yeah. Men and women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes young, Brave younger people. kids. Brave mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And they did yeah. a, lot, uh, a lot of help for us. I understand this actress, um, Hepburn. Yeah. She was from Belgium. Yep. And she would say she bought mm -hmm. it out, I heard too. that as well. She was still skinny, too. <laughs> young girl. Um, okay, so when you get to, to Bern or Bonn, Bon, yeah. What? What? We were there about a half hour, uh, oh. two hours at most. I had, I fell asleep leaning on a wall. Mm -hmm. Of course, I still had my boots on. Yeah. But other guys, and one guy's taking a haircut. This is true. <laughs> you know, I often think about it all these years later. Was I dreaming that? But no, it was true. Mm. He's taking a haircut. I mean, yeah, we're knocked out. Yeah. You know, you're riding the truck, yeah. but it's, 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 it's not pleasant. Yeah, yeah. Grab some rest when you can. And the roads, of course, and the civilians, the refugees. These were Germans now. Right. Refugees, and with their cattle, with their horses. <laughs> <laughs> so you're and going this way, they're coming that way. What? To the American sector. Yeah, what, what do you think The Russians were coming the other way. Right. We were supposed to meet at the Elbe. I found all this out on the computer. Yeah. And we were supposed to meet with them at the Elbe River, E-L-B-E. -E. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, but this was like in a month and a half. They were still fighting in Berlin. Yeah. And we were not you know, just traveling uh, on this camp. We veered off. Okay. And we're looking. It's getting dark. Hey, what's going on? Nobody. Of course, they don't tell you where nah. you're going. And uh, it, we ended up in Bonn. That's where mm -hmm. Beethoven's birthplace. Mm -hmm. And I played classical violin for, for years and years. Okay. I knew classical music. And he was one of my own. So you knew yeah. where you were. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, you no, didn't know? No. Oh. On the computer, I'm reading. Yeah. Bond. It would have been nice to know back then, you know, having it's, that background. Yeah, and when it came to Bonn on the computer, Bonn, the birthplace of Ludwig von Beethoven. <laughs> That's a, so I, I'm calling it a family. Look, 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 I was there, I was there. <laughs> but what the hell did they care? <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite composers. Man. Ludwig, what a story. Mm. What a man. His father used to beat him so badly. That, that was part of his hearing loss. Mm. He was a drunker, mm. real right. macho uh, uh, German, whatever. And that was part of that story. Yeah. So you're only a half hour in Bonn, you said? No, no it, was, it was longer, but I was asleep. Yeah. And before it, everybody up, everybody up, and the cursing and all that, outside in 20 minutes, full battle gear. Come mm. on. And I thought, of course, we thought we were dreaming, but it was... Right. We were on the force march. What happened was they captured that bridge, okay. the Ninth Armor. 
Which Cut bridge the, was that? The Ludendorff. The Ludendorff the, Bridge. Uh, uh, the last bridge standing over the Rhine. Okay. And they made a movie of it, too. Yep. The bridge at Remagen, mm -hmm. and a good fr a friend of mine was in that movie from the neighborhood. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I got to meet Ben Gazzara, who played the sergeant. Ah, yeah, uh, Ben Gazzara. Cool. Yeah. So, are you going to defend this bridge? I don't or know. To take it no, back? no, no. Know? The bridge, the, the bridge had been blown. Oh, it had been blown. Yeah, okay. it had it been blown. blown. And this is why we did oh, detoured okay. from that a convoy. Okay. Yeah. They might have needed, and Eisenhower gave orders in when from Reims, the, the mm -hmm. uh, headquarters, get every man possible, every tank, everything, but across that bridge, mm -hmm. and five divisions got across that bridge before it collapsed into the Rhine. Oh wow! Yeah, and we were the first. To architecture. We had we got there that dawn after yeah. they had captured the bridge the uh -huh. day before, and, and there was holes and. All kinds of defects, you know, mm -hmm. on the bridge because it's wood. Yeah. And in the middle was a railroad, and they were like pretzels, like that. Oh yeah. Yeah, like pretzels. Now this is all damaged from previous. You right. Know. Our guys, when they took the bombers to Germany or wherever, mm -hmm. on the way back they strafed everything inside right. that thick, thick, and that was one of the bridges that they strafed mm -hmm. many times. So it was weak. Yeah. But our guys were working down, and what were they doing? I said, yeah, well, what are they doing? Kicking. Airing their feet, they were kicking explosives uh -huh. into, into the river. Oh, Cutting boy. wines and kicking explosives. Wow. And it's on a computer. That, yeah. I saw wow. that. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, Which is odd to see, you know, kicking kick an explosive like that. That's how it, uh, quickly they wanted to. But there was wires in tubes mm -hmm. underneath them, the lower part of yeah, the bridge. Yeah. yeah. Underneath them. So that was the Germans that, that wired that to blow? Uh, years before they had yeah. wired that. And it was the last bridge standing, the right. last bridge blown. And of all the other bridges that blew and fell into the into the river, yeah. that one was still right. up. So when I said, how I heard, and the guys, you know, he got to, uh, on the phone right away. Mm -hmm. And he said, get everything across that bridge. Because they, they hear is how the bridge. Uh, hold right. I felt that bridge moving. When uh, when we were bottled up, you know, don't forget these are like about as wide as this, this, this you know, yeah. and uh, and of course we were bottled up, yeah. and the MPs pushing guys and guns, oh, it was hectic, and I felt. But during the during the uh, the balls, I I would get that that feeling in my feet, and it was that it was that pulsing, yeah, because of course uh, the, the, whatever was happening. Right. I could feel it, but it wasn't always. At night, I could feel it lying down, you know, mm -hmm. and then it, I'd fall asleep. And right. But I felt that, and I said, oh, it's got to be my feet. And also what was running one way, not two ways, one way, mm. on the sides of the bridge, the pedestrian wall. And um, and they kept it open for four hours to oh. allow the retreating journey. There was fighting in Remagen yeah. uh, by the Ninth Armour. Mm -hmm. And of course, they were running across that bridge. That was their only escape. Right. Another thing I read on the uh, computer, that uh, we were the first invading troops since Napoleon on the other side of that yeah. river. Yeah. And I was part of that. I said, hey, look, look. I was, that's a big that's Again, a big I would say, yeah. You know, yeah. I, 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 because when you came, when I came home, all right, I was in combat, but uh, I didn't get wounded. Nothing. Mm -hmm. like, I was in the hospital, yes, but that, how many thousands yeah. were... So I, I never spoke about it. How many did you kill? You know, stupid question. Right, right. I, I, I was at the VA constantly. I was a mess. Mm. I was, yeah. Wow. Um, and and we, I, I, we'll, we'll touch on, we definitely want to touch on that. Mm -hmm. um, after um, Ramagan, after the bridge, where do you go from there? <coughs> Oh, <laughs> I was at the A station. We brought in one of uh, the guys taking a haircut. Yeah. Uh, Estes was his name. Mm. And uh, he was hit in the face. Yeah. Small arms. It was small arms. And guess who they were? Hitler Jugend. Oh. I didn't know this. Right, right. But it was all small arms fire. Mm -hmm. No no houses, no artillery. No yeah. thing. And he's standing there. And I was closest to him. And I crawled over and I grabbed him by the, by the, uh, the back of the, the knee and the ankle. He was like granite. Mm. I couldn't get I, nothing. And he was in shock. 
Well, I could say that now because sure. I know medicine because yeah. I was a technician for many years. Yeah. But he was in shock, and his eyes wide open. But you usually call your mom, you call a medic, you know. Yeah. Nothing. No, well, of course he's, yeah. he was said he had a blob here mm -hmm. and another one here, and he, it was odd. Right. <laughs> but the, I could hear, you know. And, uh, so you were right there when it happened? Right nearby. Mm -hmm. I was the first one to him. Wow. And uh, a couple of other guys came over, and we finally got him down. And what happens? Here comes artillery. Oh. And we couldn't determine whether it was friendly or uh, or uh, uh, enemy. But abruptly it stopped. And the small arms fire also stopped. Okay. It was like, uh, you know, you said a prayer and boom. It right. all stopped. Turn off a switch. And we got him to a bluff where we were able to go down to a, a, a low area. Mm -hmm. And there's a jeep. It was like in the movies, you know, a, a script. Yeah. <laughs> there's a jeep. <laughs> About 50 yards, I don't know, 100 yards. Yeah. And one of our guys ran, ran over and then he's pointing to us. And one of them came back with him, the driver of mm. the jeep. The other guy was a lieutenant. And he was on one of those walkie-talkies, so I think, I don't know, yeah. he had something to do with that salvo of artillery because uh, it stopped the small arms right away. And later on, I found out these was, these were kids. Yeah. You know, Hitler, Jürgen, and they were born during Hitler. So oh, yeah. that was their father. Okay. But, you know, when we captured them, it was uh, a couple of weeks later, some of them were captured. And they would cry. They were kids. Like, uh, we were... They, they, we bought in, they bought into the propaganda and didn't realize they what they had were to. Doing. They turned in their own parents. Right. You saw the yeah. movies Absolutely. about propaganda, Absolutely. yeah, and it can happen. It can yeah. happen here. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they're still children, and they have childish thoughts, exactly. and childish feelings, yeah. and emotions, yeah. and uh, unshaven. Yeah. And they were kids, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh, was it odd to see? I'd never that saw young? them. I I didn't see them. You but didn't see them, other okay. guys, uh, when I came home from yeah, the yeah, hospital, yeah. Okay. they would tell me, "Oh, they, they were Hitler Jugend." I said, "Really? Yeah." I said, "Why? Wow, they put up some fire, but of course it was on narrow. It was all the small arms, mm. and the artillery stopped them immediately." Right. That's why I said yeah. it was something out of a, yeah. a script in, in Hollywood. <laughs> it happened just yeah. Yeah, just it happened so abruptly, and so we got them back to the jeep. And when the lieutenant saw uh, uh, Essis, he, and Essis was still in the Jeep, mm -hmm. I was standing by, he said, get him over to the A station. Okay. I, and I jumped in with Essis, and one of the other guys jumped in with the driver. And we were at the, uh, with the driver, and we were at the, uh, the shore of the Rhine mm -hmm. in no time. Where's the bridge? So I thought it might have been around a bend, because these are high hills, right. not mountains, but high. Uh, yeah. And on the Romagan side, the hills were lower than the Oeppel side. Oeppel is the mm -hmm. other town on the other side. And that's why the Germans had the high, the high uh, ground. Yeah, the high ground. So, uh, if you look on the, on the computer, you can see that panoramic view. Yes. The river, uh, yeah. the Rhine, the bridge, and mm -hmm. it's all way down there. It's, it's like a valley. Yeah. And they had a... The Good 82nd fine. Airborne was supposed to jump there, you know. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, to wipe out those guys that had yeah. the high, uh, that was high, high, uh, high hills. Oh, yeah, prime. So uh, they were all ready to jump from, uh, from uh, you know, come by Eng from England. Mm -hmm. And I met, uh, 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 when I was in the fire department, I was x-raying this um, fire marshal. Chuck Connors, like mm. that movie actor yeah. with the rifleman. Yeah. Chuck Connors, his name was Charles, but they called Chuck. Uh -huh. He became a lawyer. And uh, he would tell me, so you were at the Rhine? I was there. And so we, we became good small friends. Front, yeah, very world. good. But he died young. Uh, yeah. Very young, yeah. So, After all that combat. Yeah, well, it, t it takes its toll. He was in his 30s or mm. early 40s. So, yes. So. so while you're over there, had you guys heard the stories about the atrocities that were going on with, with, well, with the Jews? And, and, and We got to see it. Okay. First hand. Yeah. Can we you talk to, about that? Uh, yes, I could. What? But there were some, certain things that I didn't talk about. Okay. Not when I came home, like the ovens and things right. like that. Uh, uh, the barracks I saw, but most of them have been uh, um, uh, evacuated. Okay. Uh, stretch cases, real bad cases. Mm -hmm. But the mounds, is, uh, mounds were still available to see, but not as many. Right. But when we got there, we relieved. Uh, 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 a liberation uh, okay. uh, unit that liberated the uh, okay. the Dachau. So you weren't part of an actual liberation. No, you were, you you you, no. you 
took over for we them? We took over, yeah, because so they how, had... How long after the liberation would I, that have been? Uh, I don't remember. Soon? I don't... Um, uh, I would estimate maybe a week, two okay. weeks, something like that, because there were still uh, people there, but right. they, they they weren't as bad as the ones that were evacuated sure. immediately. But they were praying, and 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 some were on stretches, and they and they would fold their hands like that, and and just you know, but no tears, no tears, sobbing, yeah, but no, no tears. tears. We cried for them. Yeah, I was gonna say. So when it you was get very there, moving. How, how do you process a scene like that? How, how do you make yourself understand that what you're looking at? How, you don't. You don't. It's what, what, what were your thoughts? What, what, what were your immediate horror. thoughts of when you saw it? Yeah. Horror. Did you like, know what you were seeing? Did you know where yeah, you were oh at? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you remember oh, yeah. which camp? Because we were, we, were, camps? we were told exactly what what's what's going to happen when we saw these people okay and they had that like uh, uh military people even psychiatrists so mm -hmm. forth and we were we were uh, uh more or less uh, how, how do you say it uh program uh, to uh, what to expect okay so and it, it wasn't been a shot. it wasn't as bad as the first guys that that sure, liberated the sure. company I, i'm sure it wasn't because what we saw was as bad as you saw it, you can, I'm sure, imagine what it would have been like for the first Well, people. we heard from sure. the guys before they left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, oh, you can have it, you can have it, yeah, you can have it. We're out of here. Do you remember which camps you went to, or what camp that you was, went to? That was Dachau. You went to Dachau? Dachau, yeah. D -A -C and, and where was that? Uh, in Bavaria, of all places. Beautiful Bavaria. You remember the Sound of Music yes. movie? Yeah. It's it was filmed. Believe. It was filmed in Austria. I, yeah. I I read about it, but there's that that was the same as uh, being in Austria, in the Alps. Just beautiful. Were, and were, did you were you able did you uh, were you able to interact with with any of the prisoners there? No, no, no because they were in. Uh, they 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 looked at you with that blank stare that mm -hmm. they could see, uh, and uh, they didn't have any expression. Mm -hmm. And they, they didn't even talk, and these are people that were still there, right? Because they're in pretty good shape right. compared to what that was evacuated. Right. But they were still some on stretches, okay. and uh, that was that was moving to see a grown man, you know, sob and no tears. Mm. To describe how big the camp was, well, how, how would yeah. you? What would you say if you had to relate it to something? I would say it was miles, 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 and uh, just rows and rows and rows and rows. And um, and then the mass burial grounds, mm -hmm. uh, because we were using it too. Okay. The our guys, you know, uh, you know, to do dig out the the, and then of course take the numbers that were on them yeah. and any information they could. But uh, yeah, I was I, that that was worse in combat. I stayed with me for a long time. I, I can't I can't imagine how it, how it would leave quickly or easily. Uh, not quickly, no. So, yeah, I mean, does that just, I mean, a as a young man who's over in Europe fighting, does that just reinforce no. why I mean, why you're over there and, and the importance that no. you are? No, it had not, nothing to do with that. No. That was, uh, I, all the combat I had was before that. Right. But it, it, it really changed my mind about that German, the German, mm -hmm. how could people do that to people? Yeah. It was unbelievable what we saw. Mm -hmm. That was only one camp. Right. Now this camp, I read about it. It was built in the thirties, late thirties, uh, Hitler, mm -hmm. and he wanted. Uh, they called them Stalags. Mm -hmm. He not concentration camp that right. came after with the Jews yeah. uh, to house his political prisoners, and they never got, got out. Right. No, no fell or whatever. Right. <laughs> yes. No, they died there. They were in. Yeah, and some were Jews, of course, mm -hmm. but the businessmen, anything that, that spoke, uh, or the children would give them up, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they were the, uh, born they were, they under Hitler. Brainwashed born under into doing that. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, Goebbels, you know, mm -hmm. that propaganda. Yeah. And uh, so... Uh, How long did you stay at Dachau? I don't remember. Um... Uh, would it have been days, would it have been weeks? Oh, I was transferred to the 71st Division, a newly arrival, uh, uh, because they took out a certain uh, number of combat veterans with low numbers to go home afterwards. Okay. The number was out. The whole division was going home, but 
50 from each regiment. This is what I was told, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's 150 guys, plus the signal, plus the chefs, the kitchen, yeah. you name it, yeah. for the newly arrived uh, because of the Russians. So we had to get these guys in shape because okay. we had combat experience. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the lesser ones. We were a, a newly arrival that uh, became non-coms or were in combat. Mm -hmm. But the guys with a lot of combat, they went home. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it was only right. Sure, sure. It was only right because they saw they saw much more combat than we did. So, while while you're at Dachau, what what are your duties? Like uh, just guarding the uh, the uh, prisoners. Okay, so uh, you were guarding. We were guarding high ranking uh, um, uh, military. Okay. Like Gabe, like uh, uh, Gables, uh -huh. not Gables, uh, Goring. Okay. Places like her. Uh, Yodel, you uh -huh. know, really, really. So all plus, the ones that were going to be tried? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, they were uh, slated for Num Nuremberg. Okay. But this was a holding area. Who knows how many others were? Sure, yeah. sure. But we had that one, Dachau. Okay. Beautiful B Bavaria. And also um, a high-ranking uh, civilian. Okay. Uh, uh, Non-uniform, but mm -hmm. big shots. How many, how many prisoners do you think were there? Oh, uh, it, they would all uh, get together because they wouldn't sleep in the tra in the in those dilapidated uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, barracks okay. they call. That's where the, most of the Jews on straws, right. and uh, they wouldn't sleep in there. <laughs> so they slept on the ground on the cold ground. So, they, so they, they 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 believed in the cause till the end. They wouldn't even sleep where their prisoners and were. You could tell by the looks. Yeah. That's why we were issued some machine guns okay. to kill as many as we could. Okay. And we were given mm -hmm. orders with live live uh, ammo. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And it was uh, in case they like tried to escape or uh, whatever they tried, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you remember if there were any of any of the well-known officers there in your camp? I, no, I don't. I remember the the, the, the leather coats, yeah. the black leather, and of course it dressed meticulously. The officers, right? And of course the uh, civilians had the nice clothes sure. on too, and uh, they they would lay down that uh, that beautiful coat they had and sleep on that. Mm. Yeah. But out in the open, it was still cold. Oh, yeah. Especially in Bavaria, by the Alps. So, so such a stark contrast between the beauty of the Alps mm -hmm. and then one of the most horrible places in, in history in the world. Which, where they built the... Right uh, there. In 1938, yeah. 39. Yeah, Hitler, that Just was one. Just stark, stark yeah. contrast from exactly. reality. Exactly. And how long, were you, how long did you stay there? I don't remember. Uh, of course, the, uh, my unit came in. My yeah. unit left. Okay. And uh, I was with the 71st Division. I don't even remember the rem or regiment or okay. the company. or the, no, I don't remember that. So wh where did you go after um, the camp? Uh, that's where I was all that time. I took two furloughs. Okay. I went to Switzerland okay. on, a, on a furlough, and I went to the Riviera. So I, I, I occupied my time, and I had Absolutely. a girlfriend in Munich. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I used to bring her, uh, you know, uh, stuff. Her father, her father and mother were with her, which is rare. Mm. I wish I remembered the father and mother. Yeah. Mm. And uh, all the uh, the the outside of the building and the courtyard yeah. that was all down. Well, she warned me, she said, nine, 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 no, no walk over that night." You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I woke up the next morning. I said, "Wow, you're right. <laughs> Big <laughs> open space." But Munich was totally. Whew. Just what bombed the, out and wiped oh, out, and that was a that was yeah. a constant. Absolutely. Except absolutely. for the church spears, yeah, they were still up there. That's it. Tactical bombing. Our oh guys yes. Did. The only thing they had, uh, 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 you know, side damage, tertiary and yeah. secondary da damage. Yeah. But they, they, the orders were not to not to target no, churches. but the windows were shattered right. at the, the blast. Yeah. Right, right. But uh, they must have been beautiful. Well, mm -hmm. I can imagine today. You see it on TV once in a while. Absolutely. They, uh, the Germans, uh, I, I can't understand a, a country like that with such minds. Medicine, art, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable what they contributed to humanity. And this yo yo comes along, Hitler, and another Mussolini, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're all around. Stalin was another. Now we, right. we got the same thing again with Putin. And yeah. It's just amazing <laughs> how somebody can just. One, one person. person. Can you imagine? Can, yeah. It's, 
and, and you see what happened. And then it's too late when the damage is done, then it's Absolutely. too late. Laws. Yeah. We obey them, they don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did you, um, you receive any medals or citations or anything? I have two, yes, two. I, I had a bronze star for the uh, Battle of the Boats. And how, how did you, what did you do to earn, how did you earn I that? I don't know. You I don't know I, how you earned no, the bronze star? No. <laughs> I think of so many others I could have uh, Sure. But uh, I always said that they made an awful uh, over the limit bronze stars, <laughs> and I received one by mail. Okay. Yeah, with wow. citation, beautiful in the holder with the ribbon and uh, nice. lapel in 1950. Wow! And I said, well, uh, and I could, because wrong. they had a ceremony yeah. and it was pinned on me wow. before the unit went to uh, uh -huh. to the state for the Japan, and they were all discharged. In the States, because right. the, the, the little boy and fat boy did, the, yep. did it for them. They were out. Mm. And I'm stuck in, in, in Europe for 11 months. Another 11 months I spent there. After the war's over? Yeah. What, did you, what were you doing over there? I was a sergeant training a uh, uh, newly arrived okay. 71st Infantry. Yeah. Because up until a certain point, it was understood that, or it was thought that the guys in Europe were going to have to go over to the Pacific. Uh, and yes, and they were on their way. Yeah. And my unit, uh, it was June, yeah. and they were all out. And I was in uh, this camp with the newly arrived 71st Division. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember <laughs> what the company or whatever. I know I was training those guys. Right. Yeah. So you were over in Europe when the war ended? Yeah. yeah. Where, where were you? With the 9th. With the 9th? Yeah. yeah, we were in Bavaria in okay. uh, Dachau. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the war ended there. The war ended while you were at the camp. Because there was no more fighting. Right. There was no more. No. And we used to read about the Russians, you know, and they go, give them hell, yeah. <laughs> Which they did, yeah. Right. And I always remember that convoy. We were on the way to uh, meet up with them. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think, because it was a massive convoy. Mm -hmm. So uh, were you told why the war or how the, why the war ended in Europe, that Hitler had? Yeah. So, yeah, so we you guys had knew the reason, the why and the where? And everything was open then. Okay. Everything was open. So now that the war is over and you're still over there, still in still in the service, still in uniform, still under arms, worrying right? about the Russians, right? So you're they worried were, about they were occupying, they right. were liberating, they were yeah. occupying. You know, a big. So did they essentially country? become your next enemy, so to speak? Definitely, they okay. were during the Cold War. Yeah, and then of course the uh, the uh, the Berlin uh, Wall. Right. When I when. Uh, Reagan went over there, and yeah. Mr. Gorbachev tear down that wall. Right, right. Oh, yeah. So when you're training these new guys because you think you're going to the war in the Pacific, what, what is that? Is that all you're doing, or what else What else do you do while you're over there? Uh, I was taking vacations and, yeah. and uh, had a girlfriend in uh, Munich. So it was nice. It was the war was over. Time. You had no... But I always uh, I always carried my forty five. yeah. Okay. Hmm. Not the rifle, the forty five. Yep. How has your wartime experience affected your life? Uh, it, uh, I was in and out of the VA for a while. Mm -hmm. And now they give you pills, pills, pills. Uh, so uh, that, that was uh, when I met my wife. My wife waited four years for me, four years. And she was, uh, she was steady, you know, said, this is what I want. And I woke up one day and I proposed marriage. And, and she got, she was a, a nurse, like, uh -huh. yeah, we were married 59 years. Wow. She died of uh, diabetes, mm. yeah. 59 years, God bless you. Yeah, yeah, 1954 to uh, 2013, yeah, 59 years. You guys have any kids? Three. Three kids. I have my son, he's mm -hmm. going to be 67. Wow. Any of them enter military service? No. I have three, two okay. boys, uh, one boy and two girls. So, if, if so, what, we're sitting down here today having a conversation. You know, it's being filmed. Um, there's going to be a copy of this. Say, your great, 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 great tenth great grandchild one day is watching yeah. this film. Years and years and years in the in the in the in the future. What what's one thing that you would want them to know about your military service? Well, that uh, <laughs> I was in, I was, no, no, here, I didn't want to go anywhere. You have to remember, I was the first boy after six girls. Mm -hmm. My father took me for a walk one Saturday, and I came home. I described what, uh, uh, the way I was uh, dressed and all. I had a smock, 
little uh, girl's shoes with the little button on the side. Hmm. I was three years old, curls down to my shoulders. And, um, oh yeah, long stockings, you know, mm. over the knee. I came home with a sailor suit, wearing a sailor suit. Short haircut with, the, you know, the crease mm. in the middle in those days, Clark Gable. Oh, done. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and uh, Keds, in those days, the sneakers mm -hmm. were one label, Keds. Keds. With my Keds, yeah. My mother fit. <laughs> but what she wanted was, where did I get the haircut? And she went down to, he described it, and my father had been drinking. <laughs> and uh, he described the, uh, and there were barber shops in every corner. Right. She found a place, and with all her hair, mm -hmm. who knows what she picked up. <laughs> Irish hair, Italian hair, <laughs> black hair, right. Puerto Rican hair. <laughs> <coughs> they all went into a pink ribbon or whatever. Mm -hmm. And for years, my daughter, my sisters and my mother would describe me. You know, everybody's laughing, of course, even yeah. my father. Uh -huh. And um, now, who knows? It's, 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 maybe it's in the Smithsonian, but <laughs> it, it hasn't shown up <laughs> sure, in, sure. in many, many years. Right. And of course, all my sisters have passed away. So, uh, yeah, I remember when I was in the hospital, and um, I woke up that morning. Uh, they must have given me a shot on the plane or something. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I just remember getting up. It was, everything was white, white, white. Big, huge windows, and I was in the hospital. They called it the American Hospital. Mm -hmm. That's all I know. But it's a French hospital. It was right. like Bellevue Hospital, mm -hmm. New York. And I wake up and. Um, I don't know where I am, but then I look, the first thing I want to check to see if my legs are still with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so many things running right. in my mind. Sure. And I looked and it was over, uh, there was a tent over my feet. And I could see it was transparent, but I couldn't make out color or anything. Uh -huh. And on one side was this huge wad of white in the middle and one on the right side so that my feet wouldn't touch. Okay. And of course they had the height. And here comes a doctor with a five or six people, mm -hmm. and he goes to my bed, and he, he took my chair, and he, and he says, you're one hell of us. And he said, uh, he said something in a curse word, and he said, you're one lucky son of a bitch. Mm. You're, and because this was a ward of amputees. Oh. I hadn't seen that yet. Okay. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, Okay, yeah, I'm a lucky guy. He said, you just have a mild case. You'll be back with your buddies in no time. And it was that I had a mild case of French stuff. Who knew that? Because the pain was terrible. Right. Can you imagine what the other guys were feeling? So you went there and, with trench foot? Yes. So for yeah. somebody watching this who doesn't know what trench foot is, what is that? Yeah, that's a frostbite, frostbite. of your feet. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and everybody had some, a mm -hmm. lot of guys. And I was wondering. But luckily I had a mild case. Okay. So guys yeah. would have lost toes or feet? Black or? when it turns black, yeah. the gangrene sets okay. in. and so that's when it happens Because gangrene doesn't heal. They right. have to, they have to, right. I, that's what he said, he meant when, it, when uh, he, he looked at my chart. Uh -huh. And okay, he went over to the next day, next bed, and here comes this uh, four or five people. And the last one was a, a, a woman, and she was an American. Mm -hmm. And she bent down to my face like that, and she said, "Did you hear what the doctor said? You're lucky." And this, and he, he knows he's a, you know, yeah. I, I guess he's a, a guy with the uh, the saw, you know, that bit. <laughs> <laughs> Stay so, away from me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she said, "Oh, I'm so happy for you." And then she looked and she said, "Oh." Don't worry about that. I cried. The doctor cried. Said, you see, all the guys here, they all I was crying. Uh, but no sobbing. I, I, right. I, I really didn't know. Wow. Even I get emotional now when I talk about mm. it. And she gave me her handkerchief. That's why I'm, I'm there's a hair, remember the relic, yeah, the, yeah. the handkerchief. When I came home, my sister, oh, let me see it in French. I said, I don't know if it's French. It was right. an American woman. Yeah. And she was in uniform, I don't know, she was a nurse, a doctor, mm -hmm. what? So, oh, oh, everybody had to see the handkerchief. One day it disappeared on her <laughs> day. I wish I had it today, just sure. to show you this handkerchief. Right, wow, wow. Is there anything else you'd like to document about your wartime experience that we haven't talked about? I think about? I've said it all. <laughs> <laughs> and what I remember is so much you forget. Mm -hmm. But the girl I had in, uh, in uh, it was hard to say goodbye to her. It was really, How did you meet really her? 
I don't know. Mm. All I know is she wore black. That I guess that's the only clothes she had. Okay. Well, whenever I went to see her, it's black, black, black. So but she, the parents you went home and she stayed and that was it. Yeah, yeah. It was rough. Mm. I really would love to. I mm. did. I even forgot. I have her picture, but I got to look at it to remember her name. Oh, wow. Uh, that's a, that, a, that's a, a bit of time has but passed. But she was a sweet, the, the best thing I met in, in during uh, my time in Europe. So something beautiful out of a she was horrible plain. place. She wasn't beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, she wasn't. But it was just what, what she went through. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, they went through how the, the German population. And they never spoke about it, but right. you could see. You could see. Absolutely. Yeah, she used to tremble sometimes. Mm. And and I was a mess myself, though. We yeah. cried in each other. Though. But when I had to leave, it was touching. Mm. Yeah. What was it like when you came home? It was wonderful. I had a homecoming party, and guess what? My ex-girlfriend was there, the one I got a letter, the Dear John letter. Oh, you got a Dear John letter. Oh, she cool. met this guy, and he was going. He was be. He was going to be going into the navy, and um, but what a story! Wait till you hear this. Mm -hmm. I got to meet this guy, not knowing who he was, oh, boy. and he didn't know who I was. He might have known who I was. But uh, what happened was um, I went into the fire department in 49, 1949, and he was a year after me. So when we organized in 62, that's when, you know, uh, trying to build up the, uh, there were very few Spanish yeah. firefighters, right. you know, Puerto Rican or whatever. And uh, so we had that, always had a recruitment. We'd go to high schools and talk to the uh, graduating mm -hmm. class. And uh, it started, to, you know, so he was part of that. My first card with my picture on it has his name in the back. He was secretary or something like that. Oh, wow. His name was Rolando Lugo. And I never knew this guy, but my mm -hmm. sister told me that they moved, she moved away, and I didn't hear from her again. But that, that, that was devastating when I got that, that letter sure. in Camp Stewart mm -hmm. before I went into combat and all that. But during that time, you forget, you know, you ease up. Right. When I came home, there she was at my Christmas, at my uh, wow. homecoming party, and she had blossomed. From a girl, she was a stunning woman. Oh, boy. And uh, I remember once uh, we, we were dancing the slow dance in Victrola, you know, in the parlor, yeah. loaded with people. They yeah. just kept going. <laughs> and I said to her, is this uh, the real thing? Uh, she says, yes, when he comes home, we're going to get engaged. Mm. I says, Carmen, are you sure? And she said, I was devastated. Yeah. We all reflected back to that time in Camp Stewart right. when I got Goes that letter. That. I'm sorry, Andy, but I fell in love with this guy. And said, oh, my God, right out, out in the open, mm -hmm. which was good. Get it, get it over with. Sure. Oh, my God. And we had Chris, and we had uh, dinner dances, the Hispanic Society. Yeah. And the, fight, the uh, police department would take a table in other mm -hmm. societies. Of course, I always had an ad in the, was I, I sold the Shackley vitamins at that time. Mm -hmm. I was a supervisor. My wife and I were into it. We went to San Francisco. The company paid for everything. Mm -hmm. I had a car every year, a, nice. a, a long li limousine, Oldsmobile. <laughs> nice. Okay. And I get a phone call then. Uh, it's the, uh, the president of the society, uh, Rico. He says, Andy, you remember one of our early members uh, by the name of Rolando? I said, Rolando Lugo? He said, yeah, yeah, him. Boy, that, that was the guy that she married. Wow. He was a fireman, a mm. fireman. Wow. And I never knew it, but they must have known of me because my picture is in the magazine. That's yeah. every year. It's on the table for the people to see what we did that sure. year. Mm. And, and I was part, always part of the uh, executive uh, uh, board right. for, for 50 years. In fact, I was honored when uh, they said, well, we're going to honor this, Andy. Andy. And I, I got nice. the call. They sent the car for me and everything. It was really nice. Very good. 50 years at the historian. Wow. wow. Is there anything was, else about the wartime you like to talk about? Well, that, that the, the two trips I took while, uh, you know, yeah. uh, after the war to Switzerland, come mm. on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Unheard of. Yeah. You were in Switzerland. Yeah, I was in Switzerland. The guys heard that the Swiss wanted pens, and they were willing to, you know, uh, buy them from you, or if you wanted a watch and mm -hmm. so forth. So one, about, I collected about 12 uh, uh, pens, mm. not knowing it was, if it was 
if it was going to happen. Right. Okay. So I go to Switzerland with these 12 pens. Sure enough, I get 12 watches. So when I get back, you know, the guys, they all got a, a watch. Nice. Okay. But while I was there, I met some people. Two girls, they were a partner. I didn't notice. And three guys. And they're drinking all, having a great time. And I was leaving the following morning by train back mm -hmm. to Germany. So I, I stayed at their place. At, oh, they had their own home. Yeah. What do you call them? Chalet? Chalet. Chalet. And uh, it turned out that the two girls were fun. And yeah. I was out of luck. <laughs> so. <laughs> They say war is hell, right? I forgot that camera. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they, they take me to the to the train station. You know, you think about that today. Yeah. What if uh, something had happened right. buried somewhere in Switzerland? <laughs> right. But yeah, he was in combat. I mean, and the investigation. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> All right. I get on the train. Before I get on the window, you know, saying goodbye. So they hand me a a, a box, like a, you know, a, like a soup box at the yeah. box. Okay. Yeah. So I said, oh, thank you. So I said, yeah, we're in good health or something like that. I get back to the uh, to the outfit, and uh, I'm starting. Uh, I had I had a, a prisoner of war. He was, but he was released. Okay. But he elected to stay there. I don't mm -hmm. know why. And we became friends. Oh, wow. And he would say, he used to make my bread, get my breakfast. And I was a sergeant of that, that barrack. Right. Okay. And the guy, guy so was, was, was great. A German. But he was a German. Mm -hmm. He was a sergeant, too, in the German army. Yeah. Wehrmacht, not SS. Oh. And we kind of know when, of course, we couldn't uh, right. talk. Uh, a few words here and sure. there. Sure. And uh, and I'm unpacking my thing, and he comes out with this, this, this box in a duffel bag. What stuff you can put in a duffel bag? Right, sure. <laughs> and then he said, "Watch this box." And I said, "Well, oh, I don't know. I'll open it up." And he did, and it's a suit. Oh wow! Beautiful, oh my tailor suit. A suit. And I just met these people the night wow. before. Okay. So he takes a jacket. I said, "Oh, shiny, shiny." Yeah. And then I said, "Yeah, that's pretty good." Yeah. Then he takes out the pants. Knickers. <laughs> and I, I wore knickers preteen. I remember. Oh, yeah. I had one pair of knickers that were full of tar because I was always up on the roof mm -hmm. and my mother refused to wash it anymore. She said, No, you're wearing that. And it was Eastern, the five of us, my three sisters, my brother, and me. Yeah. And there's a picture of us, you know, wow. at that age. And you could see the spots on the knickers. And when I saw that, the first thing that hit me was those knickers. Back with to your the, childhood. Yeah. So, um, I was leaving, I don't know when, how, uh, yeah, but I was ready to go back home in 46. And I remember the suit, and I, I said, uh, I called him Sarge, but I guess he knew Sarge was here. Mm. And I gave him the, uh, the suit. Oh, oh my wow. God, the guy went crazy, cuckoo. So before I left, he hands me, uh, um, it's a flat box, like a jewelry box, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and then he said, 999 when you get home, you know, you know. Okay, so he put it in the duffel. I get home. I don't remember when it happens as to my party or whatever. Yeah. And I, it was a Luga. Oh, wow. A Luga and a Beretta, an Italian Beretta. Wow. You, you know guns? Yes. Okay. An actual, like an, an actual Luga. An actual wow. Luga. My God. I was flapping. So, of course, I put it away, you know. Right. But when I had a couple of drinks, you know, oh, I got a Luger and a, ah, you got crap. Yeah, yeah, you're a liar, this and that. I said, okay, and bring him up to the house. And one time I did it, my father was in the living room and he heard the conversation. Mm. He worked at the Navy Yard during the war okay. as a carpenter. And you know, all those pipes that they, uh, uh, with the asbestos, mm -hmm. who knew about that then? Right. He got cancer from yeah. that, but it was too late. Now you see it on TV, yeah. all that awards yeah. and so forth. Well, the, he died before his time with cancer. Mm. But he heard, he took it to the Navy yard, filled it with lead, oh. just a barrel. So just it couldn't be used. Oh, wait a minute, those are, those are parts. You can get them. Yeah. But what did I know then, you know? Sure. And I was so, I never said a word to him, neither did he. We looked at like, you looking at me now, I'm looking at you. You knew it, but Case it was unspoken. Closed. Yeah. Case, yeah, exactly. Right. Wow. And, uh, mm. On both the guns or just the Luger? Both of them. Wow. So they had an amnesty. I don't know, about a year later, you know, guys were bringing home oh, yeah. uh, from the war, a lot, a of, lot stuff. of stuff. 
So I said, I, you know, I said, yeah. but you know, I said, after that, I, I don't know what it was, but I said, no. I went around the corner, 23rd Precinct, next to a, a firehouse, mm -hmm. Engine 53. And I always remember that, because the state ball games and I blocked yeah. that was a big deal when I was a kid. Yeah. And, and I go, and it's high count, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a grown-up already. Yeah. I kind of, big belly nose with a red nose, Irish, and that's that. And I put the package in a, in a, a bag, a grocery bag. Mm -hmm. I put it in my, what's that, kid? Kid. Kid. Yeah. I Been says, in uh, combat, kid. Yeah, kid, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I said, a uh, couple of guns I brought home from Germany. He looked at me, and I'm, I looked 17, 16. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, yeah, and then he opened up, his eyes just lit up like that. Wow. A Luca and a Beretta. Where'd you get this? I said, we're not supposed to, I'm not supposed to give you my name or any, right. any details. Here's the guns, yeah. and I'm out of here, and I walked out. Mm. And it, uh, who knows? He probably that, hasn't st <laughs> oh, <laughs> still in his Of course store. you know, you just yeah. changed the battle. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you wow. need it. Crazy. A Luca and a Beretta. Wow. And I've told that story so many right. times. That's a Most pretty people good war don't, trophy. And, but they won't, they won't, some people don't believe me. Right. Of course, that's a war wanes, and yeah. you get older and older. Yeah, yeah, sure, Andy, right. yeah. Mm. Every, everyone had a Luger, it's right? It's a yeah. true story. Yeah. Not everyone had sure. a Luger. Mm. That's an officer's uh, Absolutely. A, a pistol. Well, sir, I'd like to thank you for your service. I'd like to thank you for sitting down and speaking with me today. Um, thank you very much for your sure service. Sure enough. Appreciate it.